Hi, this is Steve Zara from Zara Dental Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you a bunch of my soldering techniques that I use, and I'm going to solder a bunch of things. Um, pay attention closely because a lot of this stuff is repetitious, but a lot of it's a little bit different. You have to really watch what I'm doing to learn, and it's practice, 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 practice. Can't emphasize it enough. So let me begin. First thing you want to do is you want to have a nice direct flame with a cone on it. Everything's been buried in heat shield that I don't want to solder. And the key to good soldering is letting gravity be your friend. And to know when to bring the solder to the solder joint. If you bring it too early, it won't flow. Or if you need something to flow, see I'm allowing gravity to push it down. Another quick thing, uh, a lesson is when, you, when you're going to solder something that's smaller, allow the heat from the main source to, I'll show you. You have this big solder joint here where you want to solder, but it's absorbing heat right here. You don't want to solder this first and then go to this one because it'd be too much heat on this, this wire to make it fatigue. So as I'm heating this up, this part right here is actually beginning to get hot enough. And you can see it actually melting with the flux. The biggest mistake is that you solder this first, and that causes this to be fatigued. Now again, I let gravity flow the solder. Pull it away, let it cool, and then I can go after this one. I don't have to heat it up as much because it's already so hot. That's it. Now I'm gonna do another one, the exact same appliance. Just like I said, learn from repetition. Heat, melt the flux. Know when to bring your solder in. See, it's not gonna flow, it's not gonna flow, it's not gonna flow. Keep moving the heat, move the heat, move the heat. Don't just stick it in one area. I'm constantly moving. And making the adjustment. I need to flow. Done. Let it cool. Go after the smaller part, smaller portion. Again, it's all about repetition. Move your move your heat. Don't bring it too close. Don't bring it too far. Keep that cone right on the right on where you're soldering at to melt the flux and to heat up the metal. So you got a big glob right there, and I need to flow it around. There you go. Now again, this area doesn't take much heat because it's already hot. You get a good solder joint. Next appliance, let's try something different. This is a lower fixed expander. This is a really thick wire this way right here, I can't touch it because it's spread. Which is going to allow a lot more heat, so it's going to take a little bit longer. But you don't want to overheat the band, so you have to know when to bring in your flow, your solder to make it flow. And then you got to get underneath this joint. 
once you have enough on, you can let gravity do the work. See how it flows real nice? Because I'm allowing gravity to do the work. I'm going to be soldering some other appliances, so pay attention. Don't um, typically most people watch videos and they think like, "Oh, I know how to do that," and they'll turn off the video and not watch and learn other things. I'm going to show you a couple different appliances in a second. Again, you keep the. Consistency is very important when soldering. If you overheat it, you'll ruin it. If you underheat it, it won't flow. If you don't have enough flux, it won't flow. Here's a soldered C clasp. Now, this is because you're using wire, it's um, thin wire, so you need to be very accurate and very fast. I'm going to know when to bring the heat in. And one of the um, things I, if you watch the demonstration that I'm doing here, I use a lot of heat shield. It actually took me longer to apply the heat shield than it would be to actually solder these appliances. And that's going to help you have a, a better solder joint and it's also going to help you from ruining your wires if done properly. Another thing that heat shield does, and I'll demonstrate this one in the next appliance, is with the heat shield protects your paddle screws. Because if those, had, those paddle screws are overheated, they'll melt inside. The patient wears the appliance for, let's say, two months and they're turning it, all of a sudden it starts back turning, so they start having a relapse. That's because you overheated the screw and you melted the inside. How to prevent that? Super easy. You just, you really bulk up on your heat shield. For some reason, mini screws tend to overheat faster than a forearm paddle screw. There must be something about all the heat is distributed down one arm and not forearms. That's just my theory. Again, you want to stay very, very, very consistent. And the key of, of good soldering is, is to make sure you have plenty of heat shield. And like I said before, it actually took me longer to put the heat shield on than it did to actually solder all these appliances that I'm doing for in this demonstration. This is a soldered TPA to stainless steel crowns. A couple of these are Herps appliances, fixed appliances, um, retainers with soldered C-class. TPA, this one's a TPA, a forward TPA on a Herps appliance. Again, you want to keep that solder flowing. And that right, what you just saw pop off was just heat shield. It's protecting my crowns. It's protecting my wire. I put it here and there. When you're adding your flux, it needs to have nice consistency. It needs to, um, you can't put it on too dry. This flux just happens to be, it's getting dry, but as it, the second you add heat to it, it produces a liquid form. So when I uh, first put it on, it was definitely, definitely more liquid. A nice consistent flow.
again, I can't, can't tell you enough that you just have to be very consistent. You always see this guy, he's always moving. If I just left it there, I'd burn out the screw, I'd burn out the pallet, I would burn out the paddle screw, I'd burn out the arm, I'd burn out the, the, the expander, and put a hole in the crown. And the, the uh, solder wouldn't flow. So I'm constantly moving. This needs to flow down. So I'm moving my heat around. There you go. So you can just see it flow right there. Bam. Now a quick demonstration of what, what would happen if I just left it on the wire. You can see how hot it gets. That's definitely a no-no. Here's a soldered seat clasp on a lower retainer. Since it's only um, thinner wire, this is going to take only a couple seconds to heat. That's it. Flow, heat, flow, heat. These wires are not only glued down, they are tack welded on and protected in, with heat shield. If I didn't add the heat shield to it or glue it down, the wire would pop up. The second I hit the solder, the um, the flow stage right here, this arm would come, it would pop up. And a lot of people um, are always asking questions about how you get that arm to stay right there. There's a there's some glue right there and this is spot welded. If I didn't do that, like I said, the second I had the heat, this arm would just pop right off the tooth. And it could be easily adjusted, but why save yourself? Like, don't do that in the, in the first place, just have it done accurately. Have it done right the first time. Now I'm going back to another lower arch maintainer on a crown. This could be a band or a crown. It's the same technique. Bring the heat in, flow it under the wire. One of the things that'll make you a a better solder person is if you're how accurate your wire bending is if your wires are right where they should be and it's everything's tack welded nice things flow really solid if your wires are bent and you have spaces in between the wire and the band or the wire in the crown you're only asking for issues and that's where you're going to get porosity that's you, your your solder's not going to flow correctly So this is a long-term video, or a longer video that I'm showing you on soldering because I want to show you the consistency that you have to keep practicing. You have to go over it, whether it's the same appliance or a different appliance. You want to constantly do the same thing repetitiously. You don't want to make this burnt out. Done. Get off it. The second your solder joint is in place, you're done. Don't, ever, don't go back. And that's the problem is if if I just went back and said, well, you know what, I think I can I can fix that or I can do something, that's where you're going to get porosity. Last one, this one's one of my hardest ones. It's actually a TPA, which would you think would be easy, but in this case, there's an L in the, in the TPA, and it's buried in heat shield. This allows the doctor to... He actually can put an adjustment into the TPA and rotate a molar backwards. Most people just use the TPA as a holding arch. You can actually use a TPA to do a lot of things. In another video, I'll demonstrate that 
and show you what it looks like when you when you advance a TPA to do just more than than hold the two hold spaces you're going to actually use it to rotate a molar or distalize but the key to this um, a rotating a, a molar to be able to drive it back is to allow this L right here to be shown to make that bend So what makes this difficult is I can't overheat this part so much. So I have to use all my techniques to be fast and furious, just like the movie. Fast and furious. Anyway, let me show you what I just did. All these appliances were just done in real time, and I'm gonna leave this as is. So that's gonna conclude this video for soldering. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Also, leave a like and share the, share the video and make sure to subscribe to the channel. There's also a thing of notifications. Hit the bell and you'll be notified anytime I do a video. I might do some of these live to do something when I, when I uh, have a different type of appliance that I'm going to do something to show live. So if you want to be notified, set your notifications. Other than that, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Check me out on uh, Instagram or Facebook. And... Hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.